What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here at the unboxing of the Motorola Defy. This is an unlocked version of the device that's available currently in the US on T-Mobile. The folks at clove.co.uk hooked me up with an unlocked device and if you hear water in the background, no one's using the toilet, it's just because it's raining. Let's go ahead and dig into the unboxing. So the Motorola Defy is a 3.7 inch Android 2.1 Sportin Slate device. Take a look at the box, you have a picture of it on the front, it looks like a pretty standard Android Slate device. Picture of it on the side, and you've got some text on the back which looks almost next to impossible to read in direct sunlight. But fortunately, I have the specs written down off to the side. So let's go ahead and unbox this guy, or at least attempt to. These unboxings are a bit more difficult than you'd expect. All right, so slide it off. I've got sort of a neat Motorola unlocked handset red box. And there it is. Push that off to the side for just a minute. It's actually really thin, uh, quite surprising. So let's see what else we're going to get in the box. We are going to get a pair of stereo headphones with a microphone attachment, so that's nice. Sort of your usual accoutrement of stuff. Micro USB to USB charging port. Your battery, which is of size 1540, which is actually a pretty nice beefy battery. For you Motorola fanatics out there, it's the BF5X. Got a, a European charger. This is a European unlocked device. And we've got the back of the phone. All right, so let's take a look at the phone. We'll push off all the accessories to the side and see what we have here. So let me run through the specs very quickly on this phone. So as I mentioned, it's got a 3.7 inch diagonal screen. In case you guys ever hear the screen size, uh, that is measured diagonal. Sometimes you figure that it might be measured uh, lengthwise, but it is not with a resolution of 480 by 854. As I mentioned, it's got a 1,540 milliamp hour battery, which is supposedly going to give you about 6.6 .6 hours of talk time. Actually, the specs say 6.66. Uh, which is three sixes in a row. So let's see if this phone really is a beast. Uh, it's got Android 2.1 on it, augmented with Moto Blur. Whether or not you think that's an augmentation or not, uh, it's probably a matter of personal preference. I've said in the past, I'm not the biggest fan of Moto Blur. Uh, and this is the version of Moto Blur with the colors on it. Uh, you can see right there, which is sort of obtrusive. Uh, it kind of pulls in all of your social networking things into one uh, supposedly unified platform. It's powered by a TI OMAP 800 megahertz processor. And this is a processor we've seen in the past, which is actually surprisingly fast, uh, despite the clock speed. It really is a nice uh, uh, power-sucking processor, or not power-sucking processor, rather, uh, that really delivers a decent amount of power. On the back side, back side it's got a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus and flash. I'll go ahead and pop the battery in and put the back on. One of the things I don't like about Moto Blur is that in order to set it up, especially as a reviewer, you have to log into a Moto Blur account and that's to pull in all your content information. You can't just jump right into the phone, which I find very annoying. Uh, so let's sort of continue the tour here. You've got your Moto Blur array of buttons. You've got your menu button, home button, back button, and search. On the left-hand side, there is where your micro USB charging port is going to live underneath uh, a little bit of a door. I've got some visible screws there. It's sort of an interesting uh, design cue. We actually just follow the picture on here to see what else we got. A uh, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, which has a little bit of a cover on it. Uh, this guy supposedly is a little bit of a water resistant phone. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily take this out in the rain or drop it in some pools of water, despite what people have done on tests. That's sort of why we see all these little ports covered and why the screws uh, are all visible. You're supposed to get a decent amount of water resistance with this, but I have phones and technology don't necessarily mix with water. They don't always mix with magnets. Generally keep them away from that. Uh, and on the right hand side, you've got your volume rocker and also we've got the uh, power and lock button on top. Camera is going to of course live on the back. Uh, it's a very actually thin phone. I'm surprised at how thin it actually is. Let's go ahead and pop in the battery uh, and see what this guy looks like. All right, so battery is going in. There's a micro uh, SD expansion card slot. Let's go ahead and push that down. Pop it in. Here is the back of the phone. 
which does have a bit of a, a soft touch rubber feel. And so we're keeping with that water resistance type thing. There's a little bit of a door right here, which is gonna help make a seal. You can see a little bit of a, of a lever right there. Uh, now certainly testing this phone, I'm not gonna throw it in a thing of water to see if it works. I'm just gonna go ahead and take Motorola's word for it uh, that indeed uh, this does work. A lot of times with these reviewing phones, uh, we have to send them back after we use them. And this is, would be probably qualify under a uh, you break it, you buy it kind of thing. Uh, I don't really have a necessarily desire to uh, purchase a waterlogged and Motorola Defy. So I'm going to fiddle with the back here and figure out how to get this thing on. Something with this little lever seems off. I'll come right so back. So the back is on here. It's a little bit more difficult than a typical phone because of that sort of seal that it makes. But filled with it enough and eventually you will get it to work. Let's go ahead and power this sucker on. I think we're just going to get to a modable or splash screen. Uh, that's as far as we'll go and I'll walk through everything and sort of give it all uh, total summation when I do the review. And I peeled this off because I know you guys hate to see these things on the screen. So it is off. I do read the comments and uh, I listen or at least try to listen. Can't make everyone happy all the time. All right, so we've got your Motorola logo that we've all seen to love or loathe, depending on which camp you're in. There's a Moto Blur splash screen. Moto Blur splash screen again. Flashing again. Flashing again. Flashing yet again. One more time. Yet another time. Hopefully we're going to boot up. There we go. Now it's going to ask me for a Moto Blur login and password. Or it's going to do the splash screen one more time. It wants to make sure we know that it is indeed running Moto Blur. And if you're interested in picking one of these phones up, uh, there's a link down below to the folks at clove.co.uk. And perhaps it's not going to make me do the Moto Blur login, which is super nice. Let's say if we're so lucky. Nope, there's a Moto Blur login. All right, guys, so I will walk you through the phone and how the Moto Blur, which you've seen in the past, uh, works on this particular set of hardware. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.